Okay, so my client is back and we're gonna redo the nails because uh, the nails are getting a little bit longer and it's driving her a little bit crazy. So this is how they're looking a week later. And we're gonna really make them much shorter just so they're not um, tempting. But as you can see, all the white spots are gone, right? As I was explaining in the other video. So what happens is the white spots, sometimes they're just empty little pockets. And when the product is soaked off, the acetone dries out all the moisture from those little pockets and then once the product is on the nail the pockets fill up with water and oil again and by the way if you guys because i get a lot of questions and people asking can you do this so push back the living skin when i have nail polish on and yes you can so this is all living skin so we're not going to cut it again and this skin is going to get better if you um are not cutting it so it's going to heal nicely and this is actually underneath its cuticle so you can do this and then when you use cream i recommend the carousel then the skin is not going to grow on top of the nail as much and it's going to heal and it's going to be much more normal looking they actually didn't even grow that fast which is good well good for the client So this is what you can do, what I would recommend doing every couple of days, just very, very lightly. So make sure you're not like pushing it too much. All right, so I'm gonna soak it off and reapply the shellac. Okay, another thing that I wanted to explain. So we could, because the client wanted the, the nails shorter and you can shorten the nails, but the thing is I usually wrap the free edge a little bit so it doesn't lift. But if you shorten the nails like this, you're opening up the ends of the nails. And for some people, this works, especially so you can try it, especially if you smooth the free edge with a buffer so it doesn't catch. But if someone has, you know, problems with biting and all of this is going to drive them crazy, then I would rather redo it than someone, you know, biting their, their nails. So this is why we're redoing it. This was a very thin coat. We'll see if this comes off. Yes. At this point, you can also then Push back the living skin very, very gently. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure because I don't have to, I don't want to push back the cuticle. I just want to push back the living skin. Okay, so I applied shellac as exactly as um, it has to be applied, and I don't know why, but it never comes off the way CND shows in their advertisement. <laughs> I mean, this is the best removing product. I don't doubt it, but it doesn't come off like with that butterfly effect. I don't know why. And I tried to apply the base coat thinner, thinking that that might make a difference, but not really.
By the way, in the comment section, someone mentioned that these lines here are because of the electric file that it's best to use a regular file. But you know, that's not always the case because it's not what they used, it's how they used it. And it was just the wrong angle. And you can do the same thing with a hand file. So, although usually with hand file, the area is usually actually bigger because it was when they were shaping the product they had the the e-file actually i have it here instead of being flat like this they had it like this and the product was here and um when they were shaping the product they dug into the nail and this is what happened but unfortunately i mean you can also do this by by um having the file at the wrong angle as well so this can happen Mm, with reg regular files and with the electric files as well. It also happens very easily when you're filing a very hard product because you are more likely to put pressure and when that file slips a little bit, it really gouges the natural nail. So from beginning to end, now this is like 17 minutes, way, way faster than what I had to do last time, for sure. And because the CMD shellac is so thin, it doesn't make sense to be filing off the top coat or anything like that. It doesn't make any sense. So even if it saves you like two minutes, it's going to take you two minutes to remove that top coat. So it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Okay, so we're going to make them short. I think also when the natural nails are damaged or they're thinned out, they are very sharp and it just drives people crazy when they're growing out and they're quite flexible. So later on when they're stronger, when they're more healthy, it's going to be a little bit easier to grow them out. But now the key is to stop the biting. So we're gonna do everything to help this process. By the way, in many of my videos, I explain why it doesn't matter um, that you file back and forth. What matters is the grid of the file. So this one is a medium from Erica. And the reason why I use the medium is because they last a very long time in the salon. So if you buy a file that is um, fine, it's going to wear out very quickly. So for personal use, fine file is great. But for me, I, I like these files. So. If the edge or the free edge is a little bit sharp, then what I always do at the end, do this, and now you have a smooth area. So yes, when you file the nails with a very coarse, well, this one, not a, it's not a very coarse, but with a coarse file, 
sometimes the edge is not going to be very smooth um, but that doesn't mean that it's ripping the nail or anything like that it just means that it's not smooth so what you can do you can use a buffer just to smooth out that free edge and I guarantee you're not gonna have any issues it's not going to harm the nails So one more time, I'm just going to make sure that the living skin is nudged out of the way. So you see the cuticle is this white stuff here. So I'm going to remove the cuticle, but I'm not going to cut the living skin because when you cut it, it just starts to grow more and we should not be cutting living skin. It's dangerous, can lead to infection. I mean, some people do it, whatever, you know, for the look, but I think it's risky and a lot of my clients this is actually how they find me because they know I don't do that and they like it. So and there are salons that offer different manicures as well. So people always have a choice. So now the cuticle we removed here from here last time, right? So you're not going to have any cuticle here, but you're going to have a cuticle on the new growth because the cuticle, what it is, it's a skin cells that fall off the fold. Or as the nail, I'm going to explain very quickly here. Let's just imagine that this is this fold, this fold, fold of skin. It actually folds underneath. And <clears throat> the fold here actually makes the cuticle cells. So the cells get trapped as the nail is growing from underneath and they start moving with the nail. So you will never have the cuticle actually like growing on the nail without the nail growing. It's just growing with the nail. So this is how it happens. So we're gonna remove the cuticle. And very often um, people use the word cuticle there vaguely. They, they describe cuticle like the whole area. It's 
a cuticle to many people, but it's actually not. And now I'm just going to exfoliate the skin just a little bit here. And now there's a, um, an important thing when it comes to exfoliation. You want to exfoliate just a tiny bit and you don't want to overdo it because if you overdo it, you actually ca cause inflammation and that skin is going to grow thicker. So a little bit of exfoliation is good, too much definitely isn't. So we're not trying to remove dry skin. Dry skin can only be corrected by uh, applying oils and taking care of the skin. What we're doing here is just exfoliating the living skin a tiny bit and then just removing the cuticle. I'm actually just resting the bit on the nail, not putting pressure, just making a contact and the file works for me. So very important to stay flat as you can see I'm actually staying very flat I'm not doing this because this will cause um, you'll put lines in the nail just like before and I actually prefer to use this bit because it's not very sharp on the end it's not very safe to be going with very um, pointy tools underneath that fold so I'm just working around the fold whatever sticks out, out of it, but I'm not really going underneath because you can really hurt the nail. Yeah, and the rest of the care for the skin around the nails has to be done by the client. It's just like when you go for a facial. When you go for a facial, they, can, they, they will not be able to remove your dry skin, and so you don't have dry skin. They are able to exfoliate a little bit to help your skin to absorb the different oils and creams and whatever you're using, but you cannot fix dry skin by filing. to say um, when I started doing very very gentle pedicures as well my clients don't even have calluses anymore because if you do this very gently and if you keep on top of it and if you tell people to just very gently exfoliate once a week honestly no one has calluses anymore it's incredible sometimes the more people try to remove the calluses the more they grow because our bodies are smart
improved a lot actually since last week. Today we're going to do the same thing. I think I'm just going to use a clear. So I'm going to use the clearly pink and the base coats and the top coat, obviously.
Entrou? Okay, now the top coat is in some areas a little bit thicker. So I'm going to just flash cure. Okay, and I'm going to go. And flash cure means just put the hand under the lens for a few seconds. That just freezes the product into place. And then it's not fully cured, but it's hard already. By the way, it is very important to hold the hand properly under the light. I usually pay attention to what the how the clients are placing their hand in the light. And usually I show them um, when I do the first appointment how to place the hand properly under the light. Because if the fingers are bent, they're not receiving proper amount of light or if they're too far back. So it's really, really important how the hand sits under the light. Or sits in the lamp. Okay. I usually wipe them twice to make sure that there's no nothing sticky left. And now, especially when someone um, has um, is a picker or a biter. I just make sure that there was nothing stuck to the skin. And so now I'm not breaking that seal. I just make sure that there was nothing um, driving them crazy. By the way, when you are applying oil throughout the day or after your hand wash, that's ideally the best, you don't have to apply as much. I usually use one drop per 10 nails actually. So now I'm using a lot because we just, you know, soak the nails in the skin with acetone and everything else, but you don't have to use as much. This is beautiful. <laughs> 